Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today we are going to discuss all about South China Sea. This topic is very important from the perspective of means examination and important from the perspective of prelims as well. Let's have a look on the topics of discussion. We will begin with why is it in the news to covering all these aspects. Let's move on to why is it in the news. So Indian Navy has deployed a naval task force to the South China Sea. South China Sea, which is a disputed region, is a flashpoint between China and many countries such as Vietnam and Brunei. So India has deployed four warships along with guided missile destroyer and also a missile frigate. India is not the only country that has deployed its warships right now. We have talked about the US also deploying its warships along with Britain. So this entire deployment of a warship by India will remain in the South China Sea and also in the Western Pacific for the next two months. So if we talk about the recent developments with respect to South China Sea, China has nuked Japan saying that it will reconsider its no first use policy and that is why Japan has called out to every ally possible that we need to upgrade our military strategy when it comes to countering China under Quad. Now this entire carrier ship, this entire deployment is for the mock war drills that is under Quad only to counter China. So let's talk about this news piece and first we need to understand what is South China Sea. South China Sea is the western arm of the Pacific Ocean present in Southeast Asia. It has bordering states such as China, Taiwan, Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia, also Singapore, Vietnam. And this is a disputed region. This region is disputed by China as it says that the whole of the South China Sea is of China's. As you can see here, under the nine dash line map, which is approximately 2000 years old, according to China, this region, according to nine dash line, belonged to China and many other countries such as Vietnam, Taiwan, Philippines, Brunei, they have their own claims, citing their own historical ties with this region. So this line, nine dash line map, this is names, named so because it is composed of nine dashes beginning from the Henan Island region of China. This is the Henan province beginning from here, going up till Taiwan, having in its engulfment Parasol Islands, Carboro Shoal and also Spratly Islands. This region is claimed by China and many other countries, they have overlapping claims such as we have Brunei claiming this region. We also have, if we talk about Vietnam, it talks that Parasol Spratly Island belongs to Vietnam. Then we have Philippines claiming the region of Scarborough Shoal as well. That is why this region is highly disputed, highly disputed region connecting the Indian Ocean to the Pacific Ocean through the Malacca Strait. Also very important straits if we talk about here, it connects the straits. First we have talked about the Malacca Strait. Luzon Strait connects the South China Sea with the, of course, Philippines Sea. Okay. Which street? Luzon. L-U-Z-O-N. I'm going to write it for you. Luzon Strait. And Taiwan Strait connects the South China Sea to the East China Sea. I'm telling you because this is important for preliminary examination. Okay. This could be asked. Okay. So the thing that we have considered here is that this region is highly disputed because of many things. First that China has claimed the entire region whenever any navy of any country passes through this region, it starts to cry wolf that this region belongs to them and no other country can pass through it. For example, USA, because China has time and again accused USA for seriously violating China's sovereignty and harming regional peace. While USA, actually, it, it follows the rule of law here that every region should be open to everyone. Because if we deny access to any region, when it comes to the oceanic regions, the aquatic regions, they are actually being denied the right of passage. And that is why to defend the right of passage, USA consistently tries to have a presence through its warships in the South China Sea. Okay. 
Now, India has also changed its stance a lot. After the last year, after the Ladakh standoff, before that the Doklam standoff, India has changed its stance time and again. Uh, earlier, it used to say that we are not a party to the dispute in the South China Sea, but now it is reconsidering, now internationalizing this dispute, right? That is why India is now a being a very important ally when it comes to countering South China and the South China Sea. Moving ahead, let's talk about other disputes. One thing that we need to keep in mind over here is that why are there disputes? First, because there is no, these regions, these islands, Parasils, Pratli, Scarbolo, Shoal, these all are uninhabited. And since the year 2010, I'm going to show you through this map. Since the year 2010, China has been actually militarizing this area by building airstrips in Parasil and Spratly Island. So it is building air strips for its air force and it is saying that we are doing it for peaceful purposes. But of course, we know how tenacious and how territorially aggressive China can be. So this region, because this is uninhabited, it is very difficult to have any ties of any country with these islands and China is actually converting it into artificial islets because it wants these areas to come under the universal convention on the laws of the sea. So that is why China is making such moves. It is building its own military developments. Second thing that fishermen who should be included in the commercial fishing, they're actually acting as spies for China. And also, if we talk about this area, according to UNCTAD, can you tell me the full form of this? It says that one third of the world trade passes through this region. We also have the Malacca Strait, the Malacca Dilemma, the famous, infamous, I must say, the Malacca Dilemma, that so many choke points are present here. If any one country, especially China, has the power on it, then it will choke these regions and trade would be disrupted in times of war. So that is what we need to understand here. Also, first, I told you about the dispute. China is building its military presence over there. And then we have undefined geographic scope of South China Sea, like the LAC. This is also very fluid in nature. There is no agreed upon two line there that this is my region, this is your region. There is no definition to any region. Also, there is no agreement over, the, over any standard dispute settlement system. That is another problem and undefined legal status of code of conduct. So, US has time and again claimed that China is actually building great wall of the sand or great wall of the sea. By claiming the entire region, it is defying countries their right to passage. It is defying their countries, the other bordering states, the right to have economic access to those regions. Moving on, if we talk about the significance of this move, which India has done right now. India knows the importance of its regional power, how it should implement right now. India is very different from how India was 10 years ago right now. So India under its activist policy has said that we are deploying our warships in order to have open lines of communication with the friendly nations and also have war drills in case of war. Also, there are energy interests, energy interests because uh, South China Sea is a huge reserve of so many important minerals as well as gas and oil. So if any country that has a claim to that region by the sheer presence of its borders close to South China, see how, why cannot it come into any agreement with India for jointly exploring the economic reserves? Why not? Why not with Vietnam? So that is also India needs energy interest, especially when we know that Middle East or the West Asia region where India has a lot of energy interests such as Iran, it is being disrupted right now. Also, trade interests are there. Trade interests, as I already told you, that one third of the world's trade in trillions and trillions of dollars passes through this region. Also, strategic interests. Under this squad, quad has been formulated because Japan, Australia, US and India know the importance of the Malacca Strait. They know the importance of trade. They know how tenacious China can be. And under this only, under the development, the under, uh, under the informal grouping of Quad only, Malabar exercise now takes place, where it is being seen as counter-offensive to China. Okay, so this is the entire significance. Of course, if we talk about the impacts, tensions are going to arise. Now, since the last year after the Ladakh standoff, Indian Navy has hardened its stand. 
and also now this move as we have seen in the previous few days that patrolling points the flash points in the ladakh region they are being mitigated the tensions there are being mitigated but that could be hurdle because of this but reassurance is there about india being a regional power here each country right now which is powerful in nature knows the importance of india in asia and of course india by having this move a go forward by giving this move a go forward has reassured every country in this region that india is not going to sit back also there are going to be territorial tensions of course we already are in territorial tensions with china in many regions in ladakh and china is not abiding by any rule of law so there is going to be an impact on that as well but there will be a strengthening of cord because cord is something that may be a recent concept but it has been drawing its power from the history when it has seen china to grow and flex its muscles under aquatic regions not only in territorial regions pandora box of military muscle show there is going to be a pandora box a new a plethora of military muscle show a flexing of its muscles will take place by china as well that is should and that will be an impact in the long run and you you may say very recently as well so let's see let's move on to the conclusion this is a cartoon showing the nine dash line map claiming moon as well this is showing not only the folly of china but also it shows the outreach overreach of china okay but china as a country as a it should actually work as a responsible country in asia it should work in tandem with each and every country in order to move towards better economic prospects for every country especially after the post covid era that is something we need to consider also as you can see the nine dash line map has claimed the moon so this i chose just to show you that without any historical ties how china can define the rule of the law define a uh, defy the rule of nature as well so that is india and many other countries are aware of let's move on to the question discuss the strategic significance of south china sea in 250 words okay so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again at another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching